Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at animated overlay shapes in Adobe Premiere Pro. I did a previous tutorial where I used a color mat and a mask to do this same kind of thing. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. You can now create a shape in the Essential Graphics panel. So any shape can have color and it can have a path and that path can be animated. I wanna show you the final result here and then how we can create it from scratch. Um, in the future, I'll do a tutorial <laughs> on how you can do this in about two seconds in After Effects. It's much, much easier. Combination of auto trace and Illustrator and copying and pasting a vector into After Effects. But hey, we're here in Premiere Pro. We wanna learn how to do this. If you're doing very simple shapes, this is a piece of cake. But if you've got something complex, like what I'm gonna show you, it does take a bit of work. Let's have a look. So here's what I've created. There's been a drastic change in the 1980s to the present. The perennial ice cover in the 1980s was averaging between 7 and 8 million square kilometers. In 2012, it declined to almost 3 million square kilometers. And the animated part, obviously, is the ice flow right there. And if we break this apart, I'll turn off things that we don't need. So I've got some type uh, in the top. And I have a mat going on. And the reason I have a mat is because I need that. Let me just turn off. I need that to mask out the areas where there is land. And you don't have to do this. It's just if you're confused about how this is working. How am I able to get that white shape underneath there? That's because I have a track mat uh, on top of that, which really isn't that important. So let's look at these two shapes, which I drew based on these shapes here. So let me turn other things off and turn these on. So that shape, that shape there was the first shape that I used to trace. Okay, so you can see I drew that shape. And then the second shape was that one. And I matched that shape right there. So let's only leave that one graphic on and we'll make this from scratch. So one little important thing to understand is how to see the path. This is important. If you don't watch this, you're going to ask me tons of questions about why. It's a little bit goofy about how you see the path when you come back to something later on. You think if you click on the shape as I've got here, it should show the path. No, you think maybe if you click on the path, you should see the path. And worse, you think if you click on the pen, you should see the path. And all that does is draw, is, is create a mask, which we don't need um, to do that. Instead, select the shape and then grab this pen tool down here. Now you'll see the path. It's absolutely critical to do this, to do this, or you'll end up with adding a bunch of masks in there. Please watch that part and don't ask me why you can't see your path because you didn't select things in that order. So the first thing you have to do when you're drawing a path after you've drawn that initial shape is click on the stopwatch and add a keyframe right there. Next, you move to anywhere in, in the timeline and you change the position of the path. So if I delete this, now I move this, there's no animation. So what you need to do is, and you zoom in for this, I, I'm actually zoomed in on a 4K screen, and you move these points around and you'll see it. I'm glad that it did this right in front of you while I was recording this tutorial. This is a nasty bug that I reported 
two years ago. Um, what happens is you click on a path to move it with the pen tool. And instead of moving it, it deletes your whole path without an undo. Let me just refresh this whole project because that's the only way to get this back. I have to go and revert. All right. I'll select the graphic, make sure I've got my pen tool, make sure I've got the shape selected, make sure I got my pen tool, make sure I got my path, and there it finally shows up. Okay. So you you move a path point. All right, that time it didn't delete it. And it adds a keyframe. So I had to do those two shapes and then I would um, draw the first shape, make sure I had the, uh, the um, stopwatch selected so the second shape would, would redraw. And to be honest, I would move a couple of shape, a couple of points and I'd save. A couple of points, save, 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 save. In this simple animation, I probably saved a hundred times. Very frustrating. So let's do this from scratch and we'll get us back to a happy place. <laughs> All right, let's start by creating a new sequence. And I'm just going to create um, an HD sequence. This could be 4K, 10K, 6K. It could be any shape you want. It doesn't have to be uh, an HD format. All right, I'll drag in, make sure I've got my move tool. So here is a very large ma map. And I can change the scale of that map, position that wherever I want. Um, I'll put a link to where I, I've got this map. It says great location with a lot of historic maps, beautifully done. Okay, so this is just an image. This could be a video, this could be a Photoshop file. It's just one track here in Premiere Pro. Next, I'm going to grab the pen tool. And when you touch the pen tool, nothing happens yet. As soon as I start drawing a shape, it will add a new essential graphics panel object, a premier graphics as it's called on top of this. So I'll just draw this shape out. Uh, I'm not really indicating anything in this shape. I just wanted to create a shape. Make sure that you go back to the beginning. So this is my first shape. If you just stop selecting here, you don't have a closed path. It's essential that you click back on the first path to have that. So now I've got a closed shape. Um, having an open shape in, in with these tools will cause a problem guaranteed. Close the path. So you'll see down in the timeline that I have a small shape and that's the default size of a still and you can drag that out, position that wherever you want. So now that shape will be in that position. In my essential graphics, now I can go over to the graphics workspace if I want to, but most of the work will be done over here in the effects control panel. So you don't really need to, go, to come over to here. So I'm gonna stay back in my editing workflow, workspace. Oh, I realized that when I dragged that in, I, I had this set on 400%. Oh, it's a sticky setting, right. So let me go back to that, all right. Okay, I'll just draw this shape bigger. So this is a vector shape. A vector shape is made up of these points. It's infinitely resizable and scalable, and it always has smooth edges, will never be pixelated. The other great thing that a vector shape will give you is this shape will animate, or maybe a proper term is morph, it will morph its shape from one shape to another based on the, the points that you've moved and the fact that you have at least two keyframes. So I will move ahead for the shape, and in the shape properties, I'll make sure that this is twirled down to path and I'll set a path keyframe. So that simply says at this point, at this point, that keyframe, that's where my path is. And did you notice that the path became deselected when I added a keyframe? Yes, this is the way it works. 
number one question I get from people is, why did my path disappear? It disappeared because this is not what we would expect. I'm going to hold my tongue here. Um, so when you have, when you add a, when you add a keyframe, it will deselect. Go back to naming, go back to the name of the shape and make sure that the pen tool is selected. Okay, we'll move ahead and hopefully it won't delete and we'll move some of these points. Okay, so as soon as we start moving these points, if it doesn't delete, then it adds another keyframe. So we'll add these points, drag them out. We're, we're obviously doing something that uh, is demonstrating what happens in this area. So now let's move to the first one. Oh, look, we got to go from that one to that one, that one to that one. That's it. Pretty easy, huh? As long as it doesn't delete the darn path. So let's make this look a, a little bit uh, more interesting. I'll twirl down the appearance and change this from um, white to maybe something a little bit darker. So. Now we've got this shape. Obviously, it's hiding everything underneath. That wasn't a problem with the ice flow because the ice flow is over top of the ocean, the Arctic Ocean. So the ice flow is white and the ocean is blue. I didn't really need, need to see anything. But a lot of times people will have a map like this where it's changing the overlay and you still need to see things below it, like townships, cities, roads, rivers, and things like that. So you can do a couple of things. Um, and that is in the opacity setting. So remember that this whole shape has um, opacity settings exactly like any kind of regular shape. And here's one really um, annoying thing. Notice how there's a keyframe already set for opacity, yet you don't see a keyframe. This is the idiotic standard behavior of the opacity. It is the only property in any Adobe application in the history of the company that is number one, automatically set. Number two, doesn't show a keyframe when it is automatically set. So make sure you click on that and remove that so there's no blue and you don't see a keyframe. Now watch this, I'll just turn this down and now you can see the properties underneath. So while that's animating, you can see things underneath. An interesting thing is to leave this at 100% and try these blend modes. These blend modes are very much like the Photoshop blend modes. And if you've got a scroll wheel, you can just go through them. Forget you're even looking over here. Just look at your shape and scroll down until you find something. There's darken. Ah, there's multiply. That's that's good. That really does seem to um, be legible. Color burn. You know anything here that that you think suits it? Some things. Obviously, this lighten one. The shape is actually not lighter, so it disappears. The darker ones, overlay, hard light. I think you get the idea. Go through here. There's lots of them. Let's go back to multiply, and Look at that shape. Let's zoom that in. So you can see the type, you can see the uh, uh, rivers. Now when I hit play, and you can see it getting larger. If you want this animation to occur quicker, then just move the keyframes closer together. I guess I had dr dragged that original shape out quite a bit. So there we go. Uh, I want to show you another peculiarity just in case you're, you you run across this. Notice that I have a long duration here. I'm actually up to a minute and, uh, and a little longer than a minute. The size inside this effects control panel is relative to this size. So if I change this, Oh, it didn't have a problem. All right, so let's see if I move back. Yeah, here's the problem. Notice my keyframes are gone. They're actually not gone, they're there. I've got the graphics selected, but watch what happens when I mouse over to this area and resize. Oh, and you see them appear. Two bugs for you to keep in mind. Disappearing path, and disappearing keyframes. Um, so just do this 
People call that wiggling the handle. You know, when the toilet is running and it hasn't stopped and you wiggle the handle and stops. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a mood today. Uh, okay, so. Let me just move these. I made this too slow. Okay, and there's our shape. All right, woohoo. Hey, we want to do it the opposite way. Just drag one in front of the other. Woohoo, and there it goes the other way. One other thing I want to show you about the design of this. Let's zoom in a little bit. Maybe 200%. Oh, maybe 400%. Right now we've got a hard edge. It's a beautiful smooth hard edge, but sometimes we want a little softness in that area. And the way to do that is to add a drop shadow and have the, all right, there we go. Notice how my drop shadow settings disappeared for a second. Well, I had to unselect and deselect. So take the opacity back up to 100% and you see it popping through there. That might be a, a, you know, a totally valid solution. It looks like the indication of what you're drawing is, is actually hovering over above. That's great. I don't want that. I want the same color in a soft edge. There's no feather command here. But what you can do, I'll, I'll show you, is instead of having this offset, you take this value here, the offset value, all the way down to zero, although that doesn't say zero, just drag that all the way over here. And instead of it being black, you can select the eyedropper and click on the same color. Ooh, there we go. So now you can see that showing up. So that's the softness, and that's how far out that softness is that is extending. So it's the same animation, just has a slightly different feel to it because there's a bit of a soft edge on there. So that one was for Barat Amini. Uh, hopefully you found that useful. That's pretty easy. I mean, it's just a shape over top and you could drag as many shapes as you want. You, this, is just, this is just an essential graphics shape um, or a premier graphics shape that's just sitting over top that you're changing. Um, make sure you save a lot, a lot, a lot. I'll show you in the future how um, to do this in Illustrator in After Effects. I'll just give you a, a quick indication. You open those two shapes. Remember the two shapes that I was redrawing of, of the, the, um, the ice caps? You open one in Illustrator, you auto trace. You open another, you auto trace. You copy one of those paths into After Effects in a shape, paste it, you move the timeline, you paste it, you're done. Uh, because After Effects communicates directly with Illustrator vector art on the clipboard, it works perfectly. Premiere Pro, not so much. You have to draw those yourself. So hopefully uh, that is um, useful to you and, and you don't run into some of those problematic bugs. But if you do, you, kn you know what to do. Um, and mainly save a lot while you're working on these shapes because they're notoriously finicky. Okay, if you're new to video revealed and you found this informative and uh, um, you appreciate the fact that I took all of your pain for you, then maybe take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more and uh, help us out with, with our pain in a different way, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description on the front of the channel. We love our PayPal donors. Thank you very much. You do make this uh, worthwhile when I am suffering through all of these problems. Till next time, I'm Carlos Smith, and I'm here taking all the punches so you don't have to.